Hello, this is Nathan Builds Robots back at you with another 3D printer modding video. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the Ender 5 S1. I'll also be unboxing and going over all the new features on my new Ender 3 S1 breakout board. So this should be a pretty fun video. First, I'm going to unbox this new Ender 3 S1 breakout board. There's some significant design improvements that improve usability. So let's check it out. First, I added this 24 pin latching connector which will make changing the cables a lot easier. Second, I added an additional hot end fan port over to the right here. So the one on the top right actually goes through this voltage dropping resistor. This is still a 24 volt circuit, but because you've got a current limiting resistor in here, that'll drop that 24 volts down to a 12 or 13 volt signal, which will then run your hot end fan without causing any issues. The only thing you have to watch out about this resistive voltage dropping is this resistor can get hot. With the Noctua 12 volt fan, it's gonna be generating about 0.6 watts of heat, which is enough to heat this thing up, but it won't get hot enough to really cause any problems. And I'll monitor that on my test run. Also, I've condensed all of the connectors along the top here, and I've added a couple of holes on the side for cable management. So you can stick a zip tie through there and kind of cinch your wires up to make everything look a little bit neater. I also moved the stepper motor pin from its position on the right side of the board. I tucked it in underneath this connector. Aside from that, I just generally improved the wire routing so these traces are a little bit more efficient and wider. All boards will be shipping with a recommended resistor. This is a 2 watt, 220 ohm resistor. To install it, you'll just bend the legs like this and then insert it into these two little holes. You'll need to solder these in position. The purpose of the 220 ohm resistor is so you can install fans like this Noctua and plug them directly into this port on the top right. This top right port is a special port that goes through this current limiting resistor which basically allows you to plug in 12 volt fans. But there are some pretty serious limitations to this 12 volt fan. You don't want to be running anything that's going to draw too much current because it'll overload this resistor which can cause some of these connectors to melt or for the resistor to burn out. I just want everyone to really understand what they're doing when they install one of these current limiting resistors. I'm going to test it with one of these small 40 millimeter fans and I wouldn't recommend installing anything larger than this onto this top right breakout board connector. The other accessories that are included in the box are one of these JST connectors and some solderless K2 wire connectors. This will allow you to splice wires easily without having to use solder. And then you've got these two black clips. These clips get installed right in these 24 pin connectors. So just push them in place and they'll snap into position. You want to install them so that the L shape is pointing inwards. So on the, on the right side, it'll look like a J and on the left side, it'll look like an L. And you just snap that in place and these will be your little retaining arms if you want to plug in that 24 pin connector there. So with those clips in place, next thing I'm going to do is solder this resistor into position. So I'll just kind of bend the legs out like that. Then I'll get my soldering iron and just melt that in place. And with this resistor soldered in place, I'm just going to snip off those leads that are sticking out. And now we've got our nice little current limiting resistor in place. I'll post a short article about the math involved with how this voltage divider works. So you'll get a little experience with Ohm's law and you'll learn how to do a little bit of soldering which will benefit you on future projects. So for people who just got the board, I'm going to go over each port and explain what it does. So you can use this as sort of an installation guide. This big connector in the middle is the 24 pin connector and this is what your ribbon cable will plug into. Starting from the top left, we have a JST connector for a thermistor. We've got a screw terminal block for your heater cartridge. Then we've got two fans and these are part cooling fans. So if you wanna have a dual part cooling fan set up, you can plug one into each of these ports. If you just wanna use one, then just plug one of them in. They're just wired in parallel. This pin right here, it's called HF1. That's the hot end cooling fan, and that's designed to work with a 24 volt fan. So if you're just using a regular 24 volt fan, you can plug it in there. This one on the right is wired up with this resistor in series. I didn't ship this with this resistor installed because if you're using this incorrectly, you can melt these connectors. So basically I left this uninstalled in the stock board. You can see right here, it just says resist. So if you want to wire up a resistor, you can put one in there and solder it in place. I've included a 2 watt, 220 ohm resistor. 
that you can put in here if you're wanting to use a Noctua fan like this. That resistor is specifically designed to work with a 12 volt Noctua fan that draws a low amount of current, like these Noctua A4x20s and also the Noctua A4x10s. I wanted to add in a little bit of built-in compatibility with those Noctua fans because I know that's such a popular upgrade. Tucked away underneath the 24-pin connector, we have the 4-pin stepper motor connector. So you can plug in a normal stepper motor down here. I expect most people won't really need to use this. So I kind of view this as like an optional part, but it's really useful if you want to upgrade to using a different type of extruder. I also added in a part cooling fan plug. So if you want to run the stock Creality part cooling fan, you can just plug it in right there. If you want to run the stock Creality hot end fan, you can plug it in right there. The ABL, which I assume most people will be using, gets plugged in right over here. The stepper motor for the Sprite hot end gets plugged in right here. The stock thermistor for the Sprite hot end gets plugged in over here. And the stock heater cartridge gets plugged in over here. So that gives you an overview of this whole board. This should be compatible with Ender 3 S1 printers, but I recently got an Ender 5 S1. So I'll be testing it out on this machine today. I've actually got one installed here, so let's take a look at it. I've got the 24 pin connector plugged into the back. It's just kind of tucked in like this. I'm also using that stock strain relief, this rubbery thing that kind of holds onto the cable. I left that in place and it works together pretty well to keep everything stationary. I've plugged my Noctua fan directly into this port on the top right, which should be going through that current limiting resistor. The only thing that presented a little bit of a challenge was this thermistor wire. Basically they changed the type of plug that's used on the thermistor. So I couldn't plug it into the old port and I had to splice on a JST connector, which isn't that big of a deal. I mean, JST connectors are what ships with most thermistors anyways. So just splice this on and plug it into the thermistor port up top and you should be good to go. Here's that top thermistor port. So just plug it in right there. This is typical Creality engineering where things are just kind of slapped together in a way that just kind of works. Sure, there's room for improvement, but Figuring out what those improvements should be and modding this machine are half the fun. With Creality, you're not really getting the best machine out of the box, but they make it so modular and upgradable, and it's a great opportunity to learn about electronics and robotics and all sorts of things. I view these as kind of project printers. If you want something that's just great out of the box, maybe this isn't the right printer for you, but if you want something that works pretty darn good and then you want to upgrade it over time, then Creality's offer some of the best options on the market for that. This is all just begging to be redesigned and integrated into a single 3D printed assembly. But for now, we're just gonna go with it. I really wanna do a full redesign, but there'll be time to reinvent the wheel later. Now that these fan ducts are all installed here, I'll just plug this in right here. I think this is the part cooling fan plug. And then I got the BL touch plug down here. Now everything should be wired up correctly, so I'm going to fire this thing up and see if it works. I'll just reinstall these belts. Alright, so this should be good to go. Let's fire it up, and if I did my due diligence in designing this breakout board, everything should work fine. I'm going to test a couple of things out, starting with the part cooling fan. That's not working. If you look at the stock Ender 3 hot end, you can see these are the relative positions of all the pins. It's the same on the Ender 5 hot end, but when you look at my hot end, the BL touch port is in about the same spot, but my fan ports were moved up a little bit. I moved them upwards to make sure that I'm clear of this little notch, and there's plenty of room for that difference on this Ender 3 S1 design, but on the Ender 5 S1, it's lined up just like this, and you've got a little bracket that's blocking the spot right above where that port is. This, uh, this connector is blocked by this little support. But that's the beauty of this modder board design. If I don't have the right ports available to me, I can just unplug it, snip that wire, then take the red wire here and plug in this other red wire. But when you clamp this down, there's a metal plate in there that bites into both wires and creates an electrical connection. You just squeeze this down. Then we've got a nice secure electrical connection. We'll do the same with the black wire. I provide extra of these caps in the box because it's easy to mess it up and not push the wires in far enough or accidentally pull them out right before you clamp. So you got a couple extras that'll allow you to mess up and learn from your mistakes. 
and hopefully get it working in the end. I sell little extra kits of these on my website, so if you want to pick up some spare connectors, you can do that when you place your order. And once you've got everything securely connected, we can just plug that into these ports up top. Since this is a part cooling fan, I'll plug it into one of these two part cooling fan ports and it'll spin up when I tell the part cooling fan to turn on. So right now it's on. If I go into my settings and turn that fan off, the fan stops. So we can turn the part cooling fan on and off. So everything's working fine now. I just had to rewire it to over here where I have better access. This is a bit of an issue for now, but you just have to rewire things a little bit. And I'm going to redesign this whole back half of the hot end with a solid 3D printed part, which just makes sense for this application. Now I want to address the screaming elephant in the room, which are the part cooling fans on the base of the machine. They're way too loud. I want them to quiet down a little bit. I'm making too much noise, so let's take a look and see what we've got down there. All right, so it looks like we've got one fan here and then another fan in this power supply. And the power supply fan is actually making most of the noise. I view this loud power supply fan as a step backwards for Creality because their older machines like the Ender 2 Pro and Ender 3 V2 had Meanwell power supplies that were actually pretty quiet. In fact, they didn't make any noise when the machine was at standby. Versus this one, as soon as you turn the machine on, it's screaming. So I'm going to do what I can to replace this fan and quiet this machine down a little bit. I do appreciate how Creality put a lot more perforations in this bottom sheet than what they typically do on their designs. There's no reason to be constrictive here and putting more holes in here is always going to be better because it's going to improve your airflow and get things to cool more effectively. But this fan is just so loud. I don't like it one bit. So as always, you're going to want to be very careful when you're working with these power supplies. They get electricity from the wall, so there's a potential to have a lot of stored energy in these in the capacitors. So you'll want to take precautions, and I wouldn't recommend doing this for everybody. But I'm crazy enough to mess around with this power supply, so uh, feel free to watch me do... Basically, I made my own low voltage adapter using these uh, 220 ohm resistors. Two of them in parallel will give me a 110 ohm resistor that can handle 4 watts. So these should stay relatively cool and be able to have the current reduction effect that I need to be able to run this larger Noctua fan. So um, let me just apply the heat shrink. Then I'll get some engineering grade self-clinching nylon fasteners. All right, now that this fan is in place, everything should be perfect. So we'll just put this back onto the printer and we'll be good to go. Now when we turn this thing on, it should be nice and quiet. That's what I'm talking about. Much better sound level improvement. We've still got this one Creality fan over here. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. Yeah, it seems like most of the noise is coming from this Noctua fan. So this motherboard fan that they're using here is pretty quiet. Um, just replacing that power supply fan is making a huge difference in the sound levels. I'll close this back up. I think everything's good to go for some test prints. Ah, that's much better. All right, we're really gonna put this printer to the test. We've got our new breakout board installed. We've got some nice silent fans put on there. So this machine's much quieter now. These are some good upgrades, but for the most part, aside from these quality of life improvements, this is pretty much still the stock printer. It's got stock part cooling, stock hot end, and stock extruder. So I'm going to run some speed tests just to get a benchmark of how fast this thing is before I do any kind of crazier mods to this machine. I'm assuming that I'll be able to get up to about 16 cubic millimeters per second on average. So I'm really hoping that I can run this thing at 400% speed based on the slicer settings that I have so far. All right, now we're starting layer number two. A little bit faster, a little more fan noise because of the part cooling fan. Looks like we're doing pretty good at this 200% print speed. Let's crank it all the way up to 400%. I think this machine should be able to handle it.
Now I'm really looking forward to getting Clipper installed on this machine so I can do input shaping and push the accelerations up even higher. Right now I have it set to 5,000 millimeters per second squared, but I don't know what the firmware is doing to slow things down. You can tell it's clearly not going that fast. So um, I'd really like to have Clipper turned on and just get this thing going as fast as possible. But that'll have to wait till this weekend when I'll be getting the Sonic Pad. All right, well, I'm gonna leave this alone and let it finish printing. For the purposes of this video, this was a huge success. I put my new breakout board on and everything's working fine. We got the extruder working, hot end, fans, and the BL touch. So everything is great and I feel really confident about this design. And I know anyone that bought this is gonna have a really good time modifying their printer with it. So um, head over to nathansellsrobots.com if you wanna pick up one of these. I'll leave a link in the description below. This was a really basic video where I just changed a couple of the connectors around. But in future videos, I'm gonna be taking this Ender 5 S1 to a whole nother level. So make sure to check in on those future updates. And thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.